See how many screenshots come out of this one. We <laughs> should be live on Facebook, Matty Boy. Let me know when you got us. Okay. So, what should we fill the chase period with this man, time? There we are on Instagram. We have, we it. have to make have it we? quick because we are live. Wow, that was way too fast. I was nowhere even near ready. So Tony's already over there laughing at you, Chase. That's awesome. I came prepared. I, he's probably laughing that I'm prepared. That's Thank true because it would be Crap very weird if that was the case. Um, actually, we got something everybody should see. He's taking his favorite shirt on. Hi. What are you doing, Chase? Are you a modeling for us? Yes. I mean, and not talking. There you go. <laughs> you know that's going to be impossible for you to do. Yes, very much so. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, guys. So it is throw it out there Thursday. That means give us your questions. They don't even have to be on the topic, but we'll grab the ones that sound like fun first. So uh, disguise them as a fun question, and we'll get get a hold of you. We got Mia Chapman in the chat room. What's going on, Mia? Mia, how you doing? Thanks for signing in. Appreciate it. And uh, if you guys don't know, she's an awesome racer. So today's feed is not only throw it out there Thursday, so we get all your questions, but we're going to use the subject of tie downs, tie straps. Toe strap, toe, toe straps, I mean, basically everything to put your UTV on a trailer because we get about 10 cars dropped off a day at our shop and we see it all. And guys show up, they've got a brand new car and nobody told them how to put it on there and there's some really interesting ways to tie cars down. Wow, we already got people noticing Matt's beautiful car in the background. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Matt's car is in here. He's, uh, he's kind of, everything about him is moving in and taking over these days. We've got cars and trailers and all kinds of stuff around here, but we love Matt. RJ noticed something too, <laughs> something else red in the shop. Uh, yeah, you didn't see that, RJ. <laughs> don't, don't, don't look at that. It's, uh, it's a new pre-runner that we're going to be marketing soon. Um, it's got great suspension. It does. It run, rides amazing. Um, so let's uh, kick off straps. First thing we're going to do, let's look at how not to do it, you guys. I went ahead and tied down this car myself. This is definitely a chase tie down, you guys. It's, uh, it's, it's like a dirt bike. <laughs> exactly like that, but not since it's neither. But we have this all the time. People show up with the car tied down to the easiest thing that they think they can grab, which might be the roll cage. And they've gone over to Home Depot and they've got some ratchet straps, which aren't, which aren't the most horrible thing in the world but they're huge and they wonder what to do with everything else. So comes in, tied to the cage. Number one, this is bad news in multiple directions. First, the car moves and that means it's not gonna do a very good job holding it. Two, this is tied sideways, it's not tied forward, so it's not gonna stop the car from rolling it around. We actually had a guy come in and he had the ratchet straps thrown through the doors going across the plastic doors, tying it from left to right. And the doors were crushed. And he wondered if we did it when he picked up his car. So you guys don't do that stuff. I mean, I'm not trying to make a ton of fun of this because you know, if you haven't been told how to do it and it's your first car, then you don't know better and that's fine. But um, just don't do these things. Also, when you have a strap that's too long for you, then you have to do something with the other end. And if you don't knot this up or tie it up properly, this falls off while you're driving and it gets kicked underneath the tire. And if you've ever heard one of these go off when a trailer tire runs over a strap end, it's almost like a bomb. If you're in the truck, you know something happened. You know the trailer just basically hopped off the ground. It'll probably rip the strap, at least if it doesn't break this, it'll rip the strap right off the car probably take the car halfway off the trailer, so it's not a good thing. Sounds a hell of a lot worse than an M80 going off. Uh, yeah, well M80s are too small for what we're talking about, Chase. Uh, is that all your dad ever let you play with his M80s? Cherry bombs when we went to Mexico. You know. That's not too bad. At least, you let you have, Mexico either. at least he lets you have something fun. So that's one way to do it wrong, and that's an extreme way. I'm going to show you another one that a lot of people do, and it's not all that wrong, but it's not a good idea. So up in front. One of the things that I'm gonna basically pound into you guys on this, never ever tie your tie downs to the chassis. You don't wanna hold on to something that is moving. So obviously not the roll cage. Don't grab a hold of bumpers like this one is. Don't grab a hold of the chassis at the bottom by the skid plate, that's not a good idea either. Um, we're always gonna wanna tie down the car as close to the tire as possible or as close to the hub as possible because it doesn't move. Here's what happens when you tie to the chassis. 
You're going down the road and it's bouncing. This strap goes loose, comes back up and gets tight. And what ends up happening is these straps will start to tear and they'll start to break. By the time you get where you're going, you don't have any straps on the car. If you're in an enclosed trailer, you find your car's bounced around and taking out all the cabinets in the car or the bed. If it's on an open trailer, hopefully it stayed on it. Maybe it didn't, maybe it rolled off, maybe it bounced sideways. But you don't want to ever tie straps to something that's moving and that is the chassis of the car. Here's what you're going to want to do. Let's open up this bag real quick. I'm going to show off some stuff from Speedstrap. Number one, Speedstrap is one of the people that we use on everything that we do. So this is a little bit of an ad for them, but they deserve it. They make some awesome stuff. So here's a strap bag from them with tie downs. Organized all nice. One of the coolest things that you guys don't see are these Velcro straps that hold this whole tie down together because these get messy when you start throwing them in the back of your truck. These straps are also really good when you've got this tied to the car and this extra length, you can wrap this up and use this Velcro strap to hold the extra length in place. So these are really bitching. Another good item are soft straps. Are these soft wraps. These give you something to tie to if you don't have something to tie to. Go ahead, Chase. I know I'm not supposed to be doing it, but it's Throw It Out There Thursday. We got our first live viewer. We got Rob Wick. Rob, what's going on, man? Where are you at? What do you drive? And what's your question? Hey, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, so I'm a local guy as well. Right on. Um, weeks ago, I purchased a Can Am uh, Mac that Turbo R Hard. Mm -hmm. um, so, just getting into the off road scene um, world. Um, so, it's kind of a crazy machine to, to start with. Um, but I definitely want to get it over to you guys as well. But I've been utilizing, um, I just bought a trailer with these easy traps. Yep. And then I just wrap it, strap it down and tie it down into these knots right here. So I was wondering, what do you guys kind of think of that method on all four tires? So actually that's probably the best method to tie this, uh, anything down is to use that. Um, I was going to touch upon that in this video, but I'll do it right the second. So a tire tie down strap is the best possible way to hold a car down uh, because the tire isn't going to move and if you flip the trailer upside down the car's still going to stay in the same spot on the trailer but most people don't have the track mechanism or enough uh, hooks on their trailers to use a tire strap and for that reason i was going to say hey it's the best one to use but not the most common because nobody has a trailer to do it or a track mechanism to do it and for that reason we were going to go over straps like this but you're way ahead of the game. You've got the best way you could possibly run it. So buy a uh, strap or tie downs from Speed Strap or your favorite place that is actually designed to go over the top of the tire and use that track mechanism. Okay, thank you. It's badass. Shirt size, color. Thanks for calling in and uh, stay in the AC. It's 112 today. Awesome, thank you. All right, man. Where were we, Chase, before you interrupted me? We were going over how you liked the Velcro straps and kind of the raw essentials of what separates Speed Strap from the rest. So, besides Speed Strap just being awesome and they have a ton of product that'll actually work to tie down anything you have, basically, what we want to do is have a ratchet strap or a tie down as close to the tire or the hub as possible. So, I'm going to show you on the far side so you can actually see it, Chase. But, easiest thing to do is grab a strap. Soft strap like this. Wrap it around the lower control arm. As close as possible to the hub. And you're going to pull from here. The reason is, this does not move much. It's not going to go up and down. It's not going to change the tension of the strap. Let me grab another strap behind you to stay right there, Chase. So, hook in place. You can grab any strap. Lock that, extend it, and tighten it down. Now another cool thing about some of the straps that Speed Strap has is if you don't have a soft strap, they've got a strap built into the tie-down. So you can wrap it around the arm, hook it back on itself. I've got something that's not going to destroy the paint and can go anywhere on the car. Now, I, again, I would normally put this on the outside right here as close as I can to the hub. But that is number one 
easiest way to run this system. Also, you don't have too much length with the speed strap stuff. By the time you get out to a tie down hook over here, you don't have a lot of extra length left over to have to deal with. Um, another thing when it comes to these, a lot of people like to tie these down or tie cars down and X the tie downs across. I'm gonna hook this. I like to go this way. The problem with that, now so that normally that's a good idea because when you have two tie downs that are X like that, it's gonna keep the car centered on the trailer. The only problem with that is that now this is pulling a little bit sideways on an A-arm suspension. So what happens as you're driving down the road, I do my A-arm impression, flying. If the car's bouncing up and down on the trailer and you're pulling on it sideways, then it gets taller, 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 and it gets the tires up like this, and you show up someplace and this car's sitting about that this high. And then uh, sometimes it can settle back down, you get the straps loose and you can break the straps. So I don't recommend doing any kind of Xing on the front end of the car. In the back of the car though, you can X the rear and not have much problem. What do you got, Chase? Alley, alley, we've been doing it wrong with her mind blown. And then Jake Barner, strap it down. What else is the parking gear used for? <laughs> yeah, so I, I like the idea because it's super lazy. Throw a car on a trailer, throw the parking gear on it and go for it. But you're just asking for problems, obviously. So I'm not, I know you were kidding, but it's fun to say we can do it. In the rear, see that cool tie down hook right here? Don't use it, it's not cool. It's not for tying cars to the trailer or, or anywhere else because that moves. I mean, take a look at that sucker. Not me. The hook. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I was reading a comment here. <laughs> Lead foot transport. I just do over the tire straps. So over the tire straps, like I just said, with the person that just signed in, is the best system to run. The problem is most trailers don't have track systems. When you're talking about UTV owners, they typically don't have it. So I'm kind of going over everything but a tire strap system. Now tire straps are the best. If you don't have that option, then this is it. In the rear, if you can't find a spot to grab on this trailing arm, which is the closest thing to not move, for instance, on this razor, there's not much on there to hook onto, then the next best thing is to grab the lower radius rod, but do not grab it in the middle. Always grab it on the outside by the mount, all the way to the bottom. If you grab the middle, you can bend it, plus in the middle it actually moves. Up here is just as bad as grabbing the chassis, so don't do that. Come out to the side. If you can do that and come back to a tie down, then you're always gonna have it on the outside. What's so funny, Jake? I love Big Barner, man. What if you do over the tire strap and you have a slow leak? <laughs> Good point. Then you got a loose strap. Thanks. <laughs> Let's just one more time. Over the tire straps are the best, but if you can't, you don't have that option, then you need to do this. E-Track is much cheaper than a new Razor XP Pro. <laughs> Actually, you got a point. That's one thing we needed to tell you. You got a thirty or forty thousand dollar brand new car. You go throw it on your trailer, and you're not going to spend any money on straps. You better be spending one or two hundred dollars on something that's going to hold your thirty thousand dollar car down. And it's not that hard to do. I mean, call the companies that build this stuff. You don't want to go over to Home Depot and buy the little orange ones that are paper thin and are gonna rip the second you put it on. I mean, they won't even work on a dirt bike. You don't wanna do that. So spend some time protecting your stuff. What else you got? We got a question from uh, Eric. Uh, he's pulling his car down to the trailer from the shock towers and uh, rear tow hook currently. Uh, suspension gets compressed some, but is this bad for long distance hauling? Yeah, so um, the, you see your mic, right? So we all heard that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, tying from the upper shock mount is the same or just as bad as grabbing the roll cage. You don't want to do that. You're grabbing a movable part, it's the chassis. No matter how much you pull it down tight, if you had a strap fail, it's going to bounce up and become loose or it can bounce and use the suspension in the car as you're going down the road and break the straps. You always want to tie down either at the tire or as close to it as you can get on the control arm or radius rod at the mount, not in the middle of the race rod. Detective Jake Barner, suck it up and get an enclosed trailer. Regardless, you're going to have to use one of these methods. Same tie downs in an enclosed, whether it's open or not. Chase, don't fall off. <clears throat> so, another thing to consider is where you put the car on the trailer. So hop off, Chase. We see a lot of people do this too. 
they're not considering uh, balance on the trailer. Typically, uh, you're gonna wanna have a little bit more weight on the tongue of the trailer, which is gonna be forward of the axle center line. So there's the center of the trailer. You wanna have the car forward of that about, I don't know, 60, 70% of the car at least. That would give you a little bit more tongue weight on the front, which makes it more stable and it stops the trailers from wiggling around at 50 or 60 miles an hour. If you have a single car, a single axle trailer, and you put the car all the way forward and the thing walks all over the place, you might have to take the car and put it in reverse and load it backwards because the back of the cars are heavier than the front, which will put more weight on the front of the small trailer and hopefully stop that tail wagging that could become an accident really quick. You have another question? Yep. Don, Don Mandot, real quick here. A buddy of mine puts blocks on his trailer and then ties it down from the shock mount down to the blocks. Never tie to the chassis. Only tie to the hub, lower arm, or tire. You want something that does not move. What do you got, Matt? All right, Kevin Atkinson. What about the hooks up under the front and rear above the shocks? Uh, Thought Polaris had frame holes for strapping uh, just next to the top of the shocks in the frame. So there are hooks on the top of the chassis on Polaris's and also on Can-Am's. You don't want to use those because they're bolted to the chassis and the chassis moves and you break straps. The reason that those are there from the factory is because they ship the cars completely compressed in a, in a crate. So they're holding that chassis all the way down, air is out of the tires, completely flat, skid plate on the, on the pallet, and usually no cage on it so they can actually have a, a, a pallet, palletized box that's shippable. Okay. The only reason that works is because they got the skid plate touching the bottom of the, pl uh, of the pallet and there's no movement whatsoever. You don't want to do that because you've got suspension that will move. Let me make it really, really simple for everybody that's still there. Try never to attach a tie down to the chassis of the vehicle in any way and that is from the skid plate to the cage. That moves. Try always to tie to the tire or as close to the tire as you possibly can get with a lower control arm or radius rod if at all possible. What do you got there, Darren? Sounds like it could be fun. Jake Barter, don't tie to the chassis. You're stressing my man Justin out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it seemed like the same question every time. If, yeah. if you're asking about tying to shock mounts, that's chassis. We got Buddha 72112. What size straps? One inch, one and a half inch, or two inch? And we actually have a few people asking about this. So on a, on a UTV, I'd like to see you do an inch and a half or two inch. Uh, one inch straps are okay if you've got at least four to six on there, but I like a one inch strap for like dirt bikes and stuff. I really don't like those for a 2,000 pound accessorized UTV. So inch and a half to two inch. What kind That's of dirt what bike we do you run. like there, Justin? Uh, CR500 is what I grew up on. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I had some pictures I showed you yesterday. I, I was, was it like a impressed. balloon tire three wheeler? Is like an 80 or a 120? Although I got to see the very first UTV you drove, that go kart was cute. Yeah, well, nine years old in a go kart. <laughs> Um, I'm going to move this all the way forward and show you guys another way to tie down a car if you don't have room to pull forward or back. So, Darren, if you got a second, why don't you throw another car up here, okay? Jake Barner says we need to learn how to put these up here in reverse. Jake, why don't you come over and help us out? you got all kinds of cool questions. I think you would totally be a good person to bring in for a, a guest on the live news. Maybe we should start bringing in people. Bring on in the people. second, Rob. That'll work. Uh, Chase, did you say Rob Wick? Yep. Rob Wick, are you from Arizona? Rob, are you any relation to John Wick? Because he's kind of a badass. I've seen him do his thing. Uh, no, actually, uh, I was born and raised around Arcadia, Pasadena in, in LA. But I've been in Arizona since 94. So I consider myself a native at this point. Definitely thin skin. Um, the temperature doesn't bother. <laughs> what else you got? We got hay from Ohio from not unclimbable and diversified fab from California. Who shows that? You sound like you got a radio voice. Hello, today, today, from one sale only. Thanks, I, Jason. I honestly do. <sighs> so bad. <laughs> All right. So let's say what I'm trying to show you guys is if you don't have the room, because maybe two cars are a short trailer to pull the car forward, then you have an option to pull it backwards from the center of the car. So what I'm gonna do 
I'm not sure if you can see it, but I'm gonna tie this mount to the lowered control arm. All right, forget it, Chase, move out so I can do it. Okay. So we got the got tie it. down got it. on the lower. Instead of pulling forward, we're gonna go rearward. Moto Mojave. Hey Justin, I emailed you pictures of your dad's old shop. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for doing that. That was badass. You know what? I've been looking through all the album. That's how actually I got the go-kart pictures and the three-wheeler pictures I was showing Chase the other day when I was like nine, because I was looking through the albums to try and find pictures of the shop before it became Monrovia Fire Department. So I haven't found any yet, I'm still looking, but thanks for sending all that stuff in. If you guys didn't know this, uh, Chase, do you remember, at the Silver State 300, we finished the race, we're in the middle of nowhere, I mean literally, Caliente is in the middle of nowhere, but we're in the desert in Caliente, so even worse. We're sitting there uh, tying up cars after the race, and we're talking to the guys next to us, and after about 30 minutes, we figured out that one of the guys is fire department and works at the fire department in Monrovia, California, and we started talking about where, and it turns out that the fire department was actually in the building that my dad built for his construction company when I was a kid. And so I, in the back, in that yard area, I can't even tell you how much concrete I chipped off of equipment and cut stakes and pulled nails out of stuff for years and years in the summers, and they're actually training fire stuff there now. So it's kind of cool and go full circle in the middle of nowhere. It's a small world after all. There, <laughs> God, you're such a bad singer. You're welcome. Let me know when you want another one. All right, so what I'm doing <clears throat> is I'm grabbing the same spots that I showed you earlier. Just make sure you're tying somewhere close to the hub or the tire. All the way at the mount, I'm gonna pull this forward instead of backward. Jake Barner, yes we did make a video for the tools that you need to keep in your bag. I think we put that one out, how long ago, Justin, last week? Two weeks? Uh, no, back tools? Yeah, the tool bag. Uh, yeah, oh, it was probably two weeks. It was yeah. before the race, I think, something yeah. like that. But yeah, we've got a tool, a tool, what you should carry in your car, and some of the tool stuff uh, available if you want to go back and look at some of those feeds. Here we go. Here's my point. If you don't have room forward or backward, you guys can grab an arm and go rearward. You can grab a radius rod, you can go forward. I'm basically tying it from the center of the vehicle, and it's going to be just fine. Now remember, you're going to double that. Of course, you're gonna put two more on the other side. You never wanna just do one, two on one side. You're always gonna to want to have four. If you do two on one side, you bounce down the road, it's gonna pull the car sideways on the trailer and it's gonna get loose. What do you guys got for questions? Because the only thing I've got left is toe straps. Ruby Nezzy, free shirt with valving and a spring install. I can do a free shirt if you go live with us right now. If you, uh, actually we do have uh, free shirts if you guys are doing work at the shop. Um, there are some requirements, like um, the amount of work you do, get you a shirt, it might get you a hat, it might get you even more if you do more stuff, so talk to the guys up front. We, How we also had some people, Bright Fame, 13.5, Alaska, this fall from Arizona, have any job openings, LOL? Um, well, if you actually lived in Arizona and weren't moving down here for the job, we really don't like to have people coming from other states to start working for us, because what if it doesn't work out and we don't want to feel bad if it didn't? We kind of prefer, if you're already moving to Arizona, then come on over, get, fill out an app, and we'll get you something started if you're qualified for one of the positions. But I will say that we are hiring still. We just hired three more people. We need at least three more. So you guys put in your apps to, is it jobs? I think jobs. it's jobs. Yep. Jobs at shocktherapist.com. Don't call us. Send your app, jobs at shocktherapist.com. We've got spots in uh, installation of all of our parts. We have uh, spots in shipping. We have spots in inventory and parts. So, and we also have spots available on the phones and sales. So let us know. What do you got? How would you tie down a wrecked UTV front end or rear end damage? <sighs> then if you don't have the option of tying to the arm because the arms are ripped off, then you may have no choice. You might have to pull to the chassis. But I would suggest this. What we've done in the past when we ripped arms off cars and got them onto trailers is we've thrown the chassis on top of tires, stack the chassis up in the front so it's sitting solid. Then when you tie the chassis, it doesn't move. So if you can't stack some stuff up like wood blocks underneath the frame on the skid plate and then tie it down, 
then try tires, spares, um, other stuff. If you're missing arms, the thing's probably only eight inches off the ground anyway. So you can pull it down pretty easy. Here's a good one to follow that. Does strapping the car down, like you're saying, uh, saying uh, put stress on the radius rods and arms and ball joints? Um, it will, yeah, put some, but it puts absolutely nothing on them compared to you driving the car. How's that? Probably 5% of the stress that you would get on them normally when you drive the car. Completely off subject, Karen of Sandberg. Do you think this new Smart Shocks have an aluminum bypass? I believe she's talking about probably the Can-Ams. Yep, so Can-Am Smart Shocks do um, have some aluminum internals. That's about as far as I can go though. Well, not really, they released it, released it. I can talk a little bit more about it. So Smart Shocks are badass. Um, they adjust compression and rebound. It is actually done internally in the shock and instead of done through the adjuster. Now, like, a, like say a um, Dynamics is. So the cool thing about that is that if you wanted to, you could take the adjuster out and you could run an IQS in there. Well, why would you want an electronic adjuster for IQS and the smart shock ability? Because the smart shock will adjust the compression and rebound in a certain range. All the way soft, all the way stiff, might just be right here. If you had the ability with IQS to turn the adjuster up one, then it would adjust all the way soft and all the way stiff in a completely different range. So, and you have three of those adjustments. So now all the smart shock te technology in this range, this range, or this range means that you can set it up to go trail and desert and dunes, these three different ranges and areas of tuning, heavy car, light car, you could do that without changing anything in the shock other than some electronic adjustments. So there's some really cool things coming for that car and when we actually get that in our hands, we'll be showing you a lot more of the new items we have for that that we've been developing for over a year. All right, rapid fire, side by side trader. How big of a tire can I safely run on a 20XP4 1000 without jeopardizing the longevity and trans and drivetrain, et cetera? Uh, 32s, 33 max. You can fit a 35, but it's gonna wear out parts. Diving Girl 0270, is it better to mount the tire on the cage of an XP1000 or on the rear bumper? Um, I would rather have it in the bed of the, of the car. I don't like having tires hanging off of the rear bumper. It's a lot of leverage and the car can bottom out easier. I also don't like them on the cage for body roll reasons. So I would say between the two things you suggested, in the bed. All right. What do you got, Matt? I, I got John Graham. He wants to know about using the front winch to tie it down. So a front winch to tie your car down is the same thing as using a ratchet strap tied to the frame. So that winch is in the chassis and the chassis moves. So you use that to tie down. That cable is going to slack and then get tight, slack and then get tight. You could possibly break it. It's a lot of stress on it with a cable too. Nothing actually moves. So I would suggest not. Maybe getting it on the trailer with that, but no, don't use it to tie it down. More? Uh, Peter Quaid actually, vehicle in neutral. Um, I, I am, I'm not a stickler on either one. I keep my stuff in, in park or drive or whatever the hell it is. If you have it tied down properly, it's not gonna move. Um, if it's loose, then it's gonna bang back and forth on the park gear and could possibly hurt it. So I guess neutral might be a little better, but if you tie it down right, it's not gonna matter. You know, a lot of people don't like tying down stuff in park because if you, say, pull the car back first and it loads against the park gear, and that might be crappy, but until you tie the fronts down and pull it back forward, I don't think it's that big a deal. I never have followed that. We had a couple people here. What about installing in the back of a U-Haul or how about putting your razor in the bed of a truck? Um, same rules apply. In the back of a U-Haul, it's gonna bounce around, so tie on the tire, or tie on the lower arm, or something by the hub. Not going on the back of my truck. Um, did you guys see the picture the other day that guy had a UTV on the back of a toy hauler? I saw one. <laughs> that was <laughs> awesome. I saw one with a brand new mm. XP Pro on top of a car, and the Pro was worth oh. more than the car, just on the oh roof. Oh my God. You know what? I mean, that UTV, it was like an X3 on the back of a toy hauler. At least it's not gonna bounce around and, and straps aren't coming loose, because that thing was on there hard. I, I don't even know how he did it, but it just made me laugh. Um, straps. If you get in trouble, you're going to want a strap. The reason we're talking about straps is because you kind of need to know where to put them uh, to not ruin the car. See a lot of guys get in trouble and they'll tie it to something like right in the middle of the radius rod and they'll try and pull somebody out and they wonder why they bend the holy crap out of that radius rod. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you've got this tied to something substantial on the chassis. So it's opposite 
of what you're doing with straps on a trailer, okay? On the trailer, you're tying to the tire or close to the tire so nothing moves. When it comes to towing somebody out, you want to tie it to something extremely strong that's chassis related. On these X3s pull plates, a lot of them have a spot just for this reason, so you can tie it to that and you're not going to have any problem with bending it. Some um, don't have that, and if they don't, then you want to pick the biggest piece of chassis that's possible. It's hard back here because there's not much room, but basically you want to make sure you're grabbing the whole frame in some way. If I could take the time, I would tuck this all the way through this frame and back through so you've got a good joint. Um, try not to grab tubes in the middle. Always grab a tube where it's connected to the others so you've got a good X point to hold to. Another thing about straps, if you have straps that have flex and some elasticity to them are much easier to pull people out. Speed strap makes a badass unit and here's why it's so cool. One, you can tie it to anything and you loop it through itself. Slots in the strap. Rule of thumb is about a thousand pounds of toe weight per loop. So three loops means you can pull about 3,000 pounds without having this come loose. Now it's loose, looped and tight. That will not come off. The coolest thing about that is if you went and used one of the ratchet straps and you tied it to this with a knot, as soon as you yank the guy out, the knot's too tight and you can't get it undone without pliers or a knife. This, as soon as you yank somebody out, boom, done, off here, no time flat, down the road, you didn't have to cut the knot off. Plus, those straps have elasticity to them, so when you just bang on the throttle and the thing goes tight, it doesn't go bam and try and break parts, it goes stretch, and pull the car out that way and it's a lot easier on things and you can pull cars out a lot quicker. We actually pulled somebody out at the 300 um, because we were so far back in the race we had nothing to lose on that and these guys were stuck so we yanked them out. They had a strap just like this and we put about 10 feet of slack between the two of us and freaking pinned it. We were probably 15 or 20 mile an hour by the time it got banged on there and just stretched right out and shot them out of a ravine and we're good to go there back in the race. Kill a Nyla Arroyo, throw me in a shirt. Go live with us. We want to give you shirts. Anybody who goes live gets a shirt. Come yeah. on, I feel like I'm not doing my job here. You Peel, like him. Peel 0218, just replaced my Radius Rods trailing arms. Was wondering where to recommend to get a professional alignment job done for my tires now that I replaced all those parts. Well, what part of the world are you in? I, don't, I can't recommend anybody in Dubai right now. Let's throw it out here, Arizona. Okay, Arizona. Uh, wow. I don't have anybody that I can give you off the top of my head. Okay. You know, any, any shop that does four wheel alignments will be able to do it. How's that? Don't just go to a shop that can do the front end, go to one that, do, that does a four wheel alignment. Call around. You got any suggestions, Darren? Uh, do you re recommend plus 1.5 forward A arms on an XP1000? Um, my question was actually alignment shops. Yeah, do you have any suggestions with alignment shops? Maybe anybody that people can listening. take your stuff to? Um, you say I don't listen, Darren. I'm sorry, what, Chase? I don't have any suggestions. We do our own. Yeah, so, so I mean, that's kind of why I don't have anything I can recommend to you for, for you, buddy. We do our own stuff here, so we don't send it out. But really, any qualified shop that does four-wheel alignment should be okay. And then your question is uh, plus one, one plus. and a half forward arms. We've answered this question a bunch. I don't mind them as long as they're quality. I have seen some that don't keep the factory alignments when they move that stuff, and then the steering becomes pr a problem. So I don't recommend them for that reason. But a forward arm, the only reason for a forward arm is for you to fit a bigger tire. And you said, yeah, it was an XP, right? Yes, On XP an XP, 1, you can fit a 35 if you have the right wheel offset. So I don't see any reason to do a forward arm on an XP. Uh, if you're gonna do a 32 or 33, as long as it's a 5.2 or 5.1 offset, it will clear the firewall, no problem. So you don't need those arms. What else you got? Uh, I've got, uh, Cal Britton wants to know how tight you're going with the straps when they're connected to the lower A arm or lower control arm? Super well, tight or? I mean, I'm not laying on it like, you know, all my weight into it, but I'm pulling it to where, I guess, uh, here, let me, here you go. We got a live one too when you're ready, Justin. Here's how tight I got it. That's what we got. I can put probably put three more clicks in it, but I don't. Hey, what? what's going on? We got Kia here. Where are you at in the world? What are you driving and what's your question? Right on, man. Uh, 
Um, I would do a two inch wide strap like the ones that we're showing you from Speed Strap. That's a two inch strap. I would do four straps on the car and I would attach the strap to the lower control arm right at the hub and spindle. And at the rear, I would attach it to the lower radius rod at the hub uh, as close to the tire as you can get it. Those would be the four best places for that car. Thanks, man. Hey, uh, let us know. T-shirt, size, and color, and hopefully Chase will send it to you. And Chase, Justin, do me a favor. Don't send them seven shirts. I, I won't. And Justin, it's not a man, baby. It's a beautiful young lady. How old are you? I'm 17. Oh, awesome. Love to see that you're driving already. Keep killing it. Thank you. Thanks for signing in. What do you got, Matt? Uh, Kurt Mc, McMichael, IQS for the new RG Speed coming. Uh, not right away. The reason that is that um, Robbie's adjuster mechanism is a different size and different flow rates than anything we have available in IQS. But uh, we are working with Robbie on that and there might be something coming but it won't be on the first round of production. SMP 1982. Besides spring kits, what else is coming for the Kawasaki KRX? Mm, well, we've got internals already and we are working on sway bar options front and rear and uh, IQS is already Sorry, developed. I saw switches on that thing. Yeah, we've got actually IQS on our current shop car, as well as the internal work and spring kit. Uh, sway bar links, of course, things like that. That's all your basics. We'll probably build a rack at some point, uh, just not right away. We got Eric wanting to go live with us. I'm, I'm sending out the wave, let's see if he catches it. As well as we got Persons Nate. Class one uses trailing arms like a <coughs> speed UTV. Mm -hmm. What are the be benefits slash detriment of this style of rear end suspension? So trailing arm like on a class one, class 10, or on Robbie's car or on the earlier Wildcat. Benefit is strength. They're not gonna have any, you're not gonna fold them up very easy. Um, mainly, in my opinion, probably strength. I don't think that they have the best alignment characteristics when it comes to cycle or cycling. Uh, the car, I think you can do a better job with uh, like a radius rod system a little bit. Um, one thing though, it's a simple thing, it's a, it's a simple part with less joints to fail and have problems with. I mean, they're proven in 10 and 1 um, without any issue. I, I guess, you know, Robbie's probably going to call me about this, but the only negative to those is you really have a lot of negative camber and toe when it's fully drooped out. Um, you get toe in typically and uh, negative camber on the way up. Um, positive camber on the way down so I don't really like the positive camber part but it sure is nice not to ever have a problem with one and I raced 10 and raced class 1 without any issues and I, I do like a trailing arm pretty much every sand car made alrighty well we got no one else wanting to go live I was seeing if mm. uh, cousin Nelly wanted to get in the chat here I just sent him too a live bad. one too bad cousin Nelly what do you, uh, I got Tony Leal has asked a couple times do you recommend plus 1.5 or 2 uh, forward A-arms on a 17 XP1000. I don't recommend forward A-arms. We just kind of went through that really again. Um, you don't need them. I mean, to a forward A-arm, typically you're doing it for a bigger tire. You can fit a 35 on that car if you had a 5.1 or a 5.2 wheel. So then you don't have to buy A-arms. Justin, there's something that you forgot. It was, the it was probably thing, a lot I the forgot. the first thing you told me you wanted to tell people about advice for straps before we sign off here. What is it? What, what, what was it that you I don't know. Me? Remind me, Chase. Something to do with what I always do to you, labeling your straps. Oh, my God. Thank you. I did forget that. I meant to tell you when we started this whole video that the first thing you should do before you tie your car down is to put your freaking name on the straps because they're going to walk off faster than anything you've ever seen. All your friends are going to end up with them. So put your name on straps. I can't tell you how many thousands of dollars we've spent on straps like per year because they walk off. Trust me. They're like gold to everyone else. <laughs> Our say shock therapy on them, that's why. That's true, actually. We, we have, the reason I don't mark any of the st our stuff because they all have our name on them. Those right there don't, but pretty much anything else around here has got our stuff on it. So we tag. Ours are tagged, so we know when everybody takes them. Well, let's wrap it up for everyone, all right. Justin. What did we wrap learn today? It. So today, hopefully you guys have a little better idea of how to tie down cars. I know it might sound simple to those of you that have had UTVs for a long time, but it's not for people who just get cars. We see it daily when they drop off. So make sure that you're tying your car at the tire or as close as you can get to it. Do not tie the car on the chassis when you're on a trailer or anywhere else. It's going to bounce around and cut the strap. When you're doing a uh, tow or tow strap, 
Try to get something that's not going to knot up and grab anything on the chassis with some structure. Do not put them on radius rods or something small that will bend. Um, if you have any questions about straps and uh, how they work in different styles, contact Speed Strap. They're badass. They will help you through the process and you can get yourself one of those cool Speed Strap bo uh, bags that you can keep with the car or the trailer and not lose all your stuff. Make sure you mark all your straps. I think that's it in kind of a nutshell. What else you guys got? Anything cool? We got some more questions coming in here at the last minute. Okay, last second. Bang, CCP, bang. CCP, what tie rods do I need to use your X3 rack oh, man, with Lone Star LSR MTS plus three arms? Um, we have that tie rod. If you go to the website and order the rack, put in that uh, the options that you're going to buy a complete tie rod kit with the rack. In the comments when you check out, put on there that you've got a long travel kit from Lone Star and we have that listed. It's just not on the site as an option yet, but we do offer it. So put it in the options list, put it in the comments, and we will make the change for you. What do you got, Matt? Richie Kiro wants to know if we'll be doing a spring kit for the 2020 Can-Am Sport Max now that you've got the two Super Sport. Yes, actually we've had two people with Sport Maxes contact us about using their car, but both were out of state. So it's kind of hard for them to bring the car. If you know anybody in Arizona with one, then we'd love to grab it. We'll give them the kit for free after we do the development. What was that? Is that a camera? That camera? Just camera just got too hot. You're too hot. So we lost you're Facebook. In an air it's, shop, hey, Chase. hey, someone did How ask us if we had AC in here. How could you possibly have an overheated camera in AC? It's you. You're too hot. Oh, God. We're Man. still on Instagram. We did 45 minutes oh, on Facebook, and oh, here's the deal. We're out of here. Have, oh. We're out of here. And yes, Ding, aka Steve. Yes, we heard about the RS1 through the side by side or through. Uh, yes, we did hear about the side by side blogs RS1, and there is a rumor on the street that we will be getting our hands on it. So stay posted. Mm -hmm. Justin, where do they get products from us direct? What is our telephone number? Well, our telephone number is the same as it always is: six two three two one seven four nine five nine. I had to remember. For I don't ever call it. That's why I don't know the number. Um, and if you want to look at any products from us, we don't sell straps, so contact Speed Strap. Any other stuff like spring kits or shock internals, sway bars, all the good, good stuff, rack and pinions, go to our website, shocktherapist.com. Have a great weekend.